Today I'll be reviewing slick shot nipples for cap and ball revolvers. I'm Dustin and you're watching Guns of the West. For this review of the slick shot nipples, I'll be using two revolvers, the Remington New Model Army Reproduction from Pieta and the Colt 1860 Army Reproduction from Pieta. First, let's talk a little bit about why you want to use slick shot nipples instead of the standard nipples that came with your revolver. Well, Slick Springs, the company that makes these nipples, says that they will help in two big ways. One is with ignition, and one is with cap jams. First, let's talk about ignition. Take a look at this side-by-side -side picture of the standard nipple and the slick shot nipple. On the left, you can see that the standard nipple from Pieta has a very small opening and a very small chamber. On the right, though, the slick shot nipple has a much wider opening and chamber, allowing for more fire and a hotter spark to help with that ignition. Now, I'll be honest, I've really never had a problem with the standard nipples for ignition, but more heat is more heat. I guess better is better. Now, regarding the cap jams, the Remington has what I call the minor cap jams, and what I mean by that is sometimes the cap will blow off the nipple just a little bit from the blowback pressure in the chamber when the gun is fired. That doesn't come out, but it does rotate around and sometimes gets wedged right in this gap between the cylinder and the frame. Usually only a minor inconvenience, but it can slow things down when you're trying to shoot, especially if you're trying to shoot rapidly, but have to stop and pick out a cap or shake it out. The Colt design has what I call the major cap jam issue. What happens is you fire your shot. Again, you get that blowback. Sometimes it makes it rotate around. But in worst case scenario, it wedges it into a little pin slot in the hammer. So when you pull the hammer back, it actually pulls the cap with it. This is something we call cap sucking. And sometimes we'll drop that cap right down into the action, jamming up the gun until you completely disassemble it, find that spent cap, and remove it. Now, the way that Slick Spring says these nipples will help with that, take a look at this side-by-side -side picture. Now you can see that the slick shot nipple has little vent holes in the side. What this does is allow some of that pressure coming back to escape sideways rather than all of it coming back far enough and hard enough to push the cap off. Hopefully this will allow more caps to stay on so that I'll be able to just pull the hammer, fire, pull the hammer, fire, and so on without having to stop. Now how often would I otherwise have to stop and pick caps out of the gun? Well. Take a look at this little montage of me dealing with cap jams in earlier videos. So you can see there, I definitely could use some improvement in reliability with cap and ball revolvers. So let's go ahead and get these installed. I'll start with the Colt. So I'll move the Remington just a little to the side. And I'll begin on the Colt by disassembling it. Knock the wedge out of the gun. Move the barrel. Pull the hammer back to half cock. Cylinder comes off. Now, as I'm doing this, I'll also share just a couple of little tips that I've picked up with experience over the years for taking out nipples and also for reinstalling them. To take them out, pretty self-explanatory. I put the nipple wrench down onto a nipple, twist it out to the left counterclockwise. We'll set that aside for a moment and let's open up the slick shots. Now, before I put one on, I'll show you something that I always do whenever I'm putting nipples in a revolver. They're threaded, obviously, and I'm going to grease those threads. The product I use for that is this Thompson Center Super Lube Anti-Seize Lubricant. There are many other anti-seize lubricants. I've even seen some people use shotgun choke tube lube. Now I'm going to put three drops around the threads. Then, using the tip of the tube, I'll just smear them around, get them evenly distributed, and then set the nipple down right there. Then I'll take my nipple wrench and here's the other tip for putting in a nipple. Get it situated onto the nipple but instead of just turning to the right some people have trouble getting these started. I've seen some people pick this up, try to use two hands like this, it's very awkward. I like to set it face down just like that. 
Now watch, I'm going to turn the nipple wrench to the left, which sounds backwards, but I'll do that until I hear it click. There it is. That means that I just heard the threads drop down properly into place so there's no chance of cross-threading. That means I can just, with worry-free, twist it clockwise, tighten it down. And I've had people ask me in comments on other videos how tight to tighten them. Once I get it down to where it meets resistance, the analogy I use is I'm going to turn this wrench about as hard as I would when starting an engine with a key. So just a quick little twist like that, and it's done. Now I'll go ahead and do the other five off camera. Okay, well if you take a look right in here, you can see I've got the slick shot nipples installed all the way around on the Colt. And I actually went ahead and installed them on the Remington cylinder as well, except for one, because there's one more installation tip to share with you. And that is on the Remington, if you try to get the nipple wrench on the nipple and just go straight down like you would on the Colt, it won't work. There's a slight tilt, so I'm going to lean the wrench out just a little like this. Give it that backwards turn until I get the click. And then just tighten down. With the slick shots installed on both guns, let's get outside and see how they perform. All right, well, we're out here in the beautiful west desert of the state of Utah. Got the 1860 Army loaded up. Let's go see how it performs with the slick shot nipples. Well, it got through that cylinder without a single cap jam, and as you know, that's fairly rare with the old Colt style. But was it a fluke, or is that a benefit of the slick shot nipples? Let's try it again and see. Now let's try out the slick shot nipples on the Remington Army. Alright, looks like they work pretty well on the Remington as well. I think we'll go ahead and give it one more- Oh no! Uh. Well, folks, I really didn't think this would happen, but the high fructose gang has returned again. Let's see if the slick shot nipples will keep this Remington reliable enough to take out those carbonated bandits. had to reload to take care of that last bandit. Well, that test went very well. I did miss the target a few times, but I think we can blame me for that, not the slick shot nipples. Now, I did some more shooting off camera, lots more actually, and all evening long that I was out there, not a single cap jam. Of course, I'm not going to say that these would never allow for a cap jam. I'm sure I'll have some in the future, but I think it's safe to say cap jams are going to be greatly reduced, even if not eliminated. And I also have to say I like them so much, I've gone ahead and installed them also on the 1847 Colt Walker and even on the 1851 Navy. You can now see them there too. This is a product I definitely like and I definitely recommend. Please look down in the video description. You'll see a link to the Slick Springs website so that you can get your own. Now they do have them for the Pieta models, at least most, and most of the Uberti models. There are some guns that these won't work with and the website will list them. Prices, I won't quote, they may change, so check the website there. But they seem to be the same universally across most, except for Walkers and Dragoons. Those are just a few dollars more. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video today about the Slick Shot Nipples. If you'd like to order some for your revolver, you'll find the link right here in the description down below. 
Please don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos and look in the description to see where to find me on social media. Thank you so much for watching.